What's that? The train is pulling into the station again? I'm uh, back for a third part of this uh, A-star algorithm thingamabob because I did, uh, uh, I, I did want to, what, what you would, what saw actually in the first part is um, uh, visually, this is a surprise third part by the way, because I didn't mention that it was going to be three parts. It's fine though, it's fine. It's what it is. Uh, you're watching or you're not watching, that's life. Um, uh, in the first part, I showed it visually a little bit different, and so I'm going to get to there, and I'll, I just want to kind of play around with it visually a little bit to give some you guys some things to think about, and I'm hoping that uh, I'll see a lot of you sharing 3D versions or other types of visual versions. So let's see, um, let's see um, um, what we can do here. The first thing that I'm going to look at is uh, a different way of drawing the path. So one way that I want to draw the path is actually by a continuous line. So I'm going to say begin shape and, uh, oh, not begin, begin shape and end shape. And I'm going to have this same exact uh, for loop, but instead of calling that show function that draws a rectangle, I'm going to add a vertex. And the vertex needs to be at each path is, path, path is, paths, um, i times w, and it's j times h. And we don't want this to have a fill. And we do want this to have a stroke. I'm just going to make it white right now, and we'll sort of see if that comes up. So let's look at what happens there. So, whoops, I don't see that. Why don't I see that? Oh, path J. Uh. Shoot. Always oh, in. I need a, like, a sound effect, not just for the this dot problem, but the I versus J, X versus Y problem. So if we come back and see that, we can see, oh, still not working. What? Oh, dot J. Oh, my goodness. I can't, I can't do it anymore. OK, there we go. So we can see that I'm drawing kind of a line. Um, so that's a little connecting a little bit. You can see the line though is kind of connected from the, the edge so as it goes across the top or goes across the bottom, which isn't exactly right. So I also should kind of consider the line between the center of each one of these cells, uh, which is you know, adding the height or width divided by two. So now we can see I'm seeing the sort of path as a line. Now, there is this kind of issue of should I be allowed to go between these two, right? This is a valid diagonal step, but is this really like a valid part? So I think an interesting exercise for those of you watching would be how do you modify this so that's not a valid uh, a move? I would have to actually go around that somehow. I, I can go diagonally, but not if there are two, only if this was open as well. I don't know if it should be or not, but one way I could visually at least address this is I could say, um, if I come back up, sorry, to the where I'm drawing these, let's make these actually circles. And so actually I'm going to take the same exact line of code. Um, and I'm going to, I, I need to draw the circles based on the center. And I also could draw their size a bit smaller. So let's draw all those as points as circles, and you can sort of see, ah, look, so there's some strange things going on now the way that I visualize this. Really weird things, actually. I shouldn't be allowed to record videos uh, after a certain amount of time. Okay, so now we can see, and I don't want to draw the uh, path anymore, I mean the circles anymore for the path, so I'm going to take out those. I also want to make this stroke weight, let's just make it like a little bit wider so it's a little bit stronger. And now what are the white circles? Why are there white circles? The only thing that I'm drawing now is are the path and the grid. So I'm showing the grid as white and I'm only, so everything is white unless it's an obstacle, it's black. So what I actually want to do is only draw it if it's an obstacle. And I also need the background, therefore, to be, wow, I really did this in a crazy way. What's the background now? The background is, So, and then those are the obstacles. Now, where's the path? <laughs> Let's make the path some kind of color. There we go. 
So we can see now that I'm getting a path that's kind of going, and this almost looks a bit more realistic. I don't know if this is better. I had something different at the beginning of the video, but um, I can actually like, what I might do is um, um, make some more obstacles, uh, or actually instead of making more obstacles, what I might do just to sort of like see this a little bit better is to make a larger grid. Uh, and we can kind of see, so this we can kind of see a bit more about how you could start to imagine like visualizing this uh, pathfinding thing in a different way. It almost looks like lightning in this kind of like crazy way. But um, you could think about what does it mean to have autonomous agents following the path? How might you draw these obstacles in different ways? What kinds of colors? You know, what if, again, I said this before, but what if the way that you arrange these obstacles is actually some type of image or a geometric pattern using Perlin noise or perhaps actually creating an actual maze um, using some of the maze, gener uh, 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 maze generation algorithm that you can look at. And boy, why did it go to the top left that time? Oh, this is this because it had no this had no solution. Okay, so um, so I think I don't know if this third part of the video should actually anybody should ever actually watch it. But I guess if you're watching it, then it did happen and it is online and you watched it. But um, so. Uh, um, I should connect obstacles which are connected. That's a really good idea. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise for those of you watching. I'm making this video just to give you some more thinking and possible ways about re-visualizing this in a different way. Um, and I would love to see what you make out of it. Um, and so thanks for watching. Uh, Coding Train is leaving the station. <laughs>